What is going on, people? Happy October. For those of you who don't know why I'm here, and if those who can't read the title over here, this is the first video for my series, the, the October long series, 31 Days, Half October. What I'm going to be doing is doing one review a day, possibly one, maybe maybe a few others. I might sprinkle in some extra ones, but you'll get a review from me for the entire month of October, 31 days, 31 reviews. So hopefully you're ready for it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. If you want a little bit extra, you know, want to know a little bit more, check out the video I did right before this. I'm going to be doing more indie, lesser known titles, maybe not all indie, but lesser known titles that, you know, should get the light of day. I'm not going to do your run-the-mill Friday the 13th, Halloween, Night of the Living Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street kind of deal, because those have been done enough. Nothing wrong with them, they're some of my favorite movies. But what I'm going to do in this month is try to talk about movies that might not get the limelight that are actually good and, you know, not a lot of people know about. So, the first movie I'm going to do, the first one to kick this month off, is one I actually got yesterday uh, through the mail. I ordered it off Amazon. It took, it said, take about three to four months, which I'm like, what? But it took like three to four days. I don't know if it's a typo on Amazon, whatever. Finally got it, watched it. And I definitely enjoyed it. The tagline of this is a crowd pleaser in the mold of Shaun of the Dead. Maybe not the tagline, but that's what Toronto After Dark said. So, the movie I'm going to be reviewing in this is Night of the Living Dead. A little glare, but Night of the Living Dead. It's directed by Kyle Rankin. It's written by Kyle Rankin and Andy Seltzer. It stars Maria Tyler, Sind Wilder, and Ray Wise, among many others. So pretty much what this is about is the girl on the cover, her name is Deb. She ends up going out one night to a bar with her friend, and they're just sitting there talking. And they notice a guy at the bar, and the friend's like, Hey, listen, you should go hit on him, this, that, this, or talk to him at least. And Deb you know, goes and talks to this guy, he's buying drinks, she takes one from him, and they're about to talk and everything, they, they're sitting there talking for a little bit, lo and behold, this guy is engaged, and the girlfriend comes over, you know, busts up this whole little party and whatever, and you could tell that this girl is definitely a stuck-up bitch for the, you know, for the light-hearted, she's not a very nice person. So she's talking about how the guy's going to take the job with his father and whatever, and he's not all about it. So at that point, they break up. They're, listen, they're like, you know, let's just end this thing, whatever. So Deb finally, you know, ends up going home with this guy. Next morning, she wakes up. She doesn't know where she is. Well, kind of. She ends up running into the bathroom, somehow knowing where the bathroom is. That's a little odd. But... She ends up going to the bathroom and realizing that she is not in her house or does not know where she is. She wakes up, gets out of bed, and hears this guy on the phone talking about how he brought her home. He doesn't know how to kind of get her out of the house. He doesn't know what, what happened last night. She doesn't know what happened last night. And he doesn't want to make it too awkward. So he, he ends up walking into the room, and she's sitting there, and he's like, Listen, I don't know what happened last night. Last night was a mistake. You kind of got to leave. And as they're both talking to a friend, their friends, because she called her friend from the night before, he's talking to his friend. On a phone call, you hear them kind of end the phone call kind of abruptly. So you think, okay, what's going on here? So they both go outside, and they realize something is definitely wrong. She drives away in her car, and she notices people, like, eating each other. And the one there's one girl zombie that ends up, like, trying to get in the car. She realizes something's going on. This guy ends up going into a coffee shop. I guess he's on his way to work, and he, he figures out. Now, you see there's a epidemic going on. There is zombies all over the place. So, somehow they run back into each other, and now it's a fight for survival, which 
you know, it was very interesting because it was like a one night, bad one night stand that continues throughout the day. So he ends up wanting to go to his family's house and, you know, checking on his brother and his father and his uh, ex fiance at this point, I'm guessing. And you find out that, well, first of all, it's taken around uh, 4th of July. You find out that the father is a huge 4th of July fan and all this stuff, which really doesn't help the plot whatsoever. But they end up going to this guy's house, or family's house, and you find out it's a big gated community. You find out the father's a big honcho and whatever, and they're all safe. You find out that this is a man-made, I guess you want to call it, zombie apocalypse. There was something wrong with the water in this town, or whatever they were doing. They were trying to clean it. Well, it had the exact opposite effect. They didn't test anything, so this water that the people were drinking turned them into these zombies. You find out that Deb is a, a newscaster, and she's all upset about this, so she leaves, and now it's this guy trying to find her. You know, I guess there's a blooming love interest or whatever. So the rest of the movie is them trying to find a cure, trying to get the word out that, you know, this zombie apocalypse is happening. Throughout the movie, you know, like I said, it says it's in the, you know, mold of Shaun of the Dead. And it has that cut and dry humor. Some jokes hit, some don't. But overall, it is a funny, you know, horror comedy, I guess you want to call it. Not a whole bunch of, you know, gore to it. It is, you know, a lower budget. Uh, so there's not much in the aspects of gore or anything when they get some of these people get killed. You don't see it, it's kind of offhand, you hear noises, but you don't really see guts or anything flying around. So, it's not really your typical run-of-the-mill gore. It is your horror comedy. So if you're into that, like I said, it, it has that, you know, overall Shaun of the Dead vibe to it. So if you're into Shaun of the Dead, you'll probably like this one. I enjoyed it for what it was. I'm surprised I never heard of it before. I just re literally heard it or saw it on couple people's instagrams and i was like you know what let me pick it up it's cheap enough on amazon so i picked it up and yes night of the living deb is the first addition to 31 days half october so like i said in the previous video check that out first i will be doing i have you know a pretty good list of my own there's some i might sprinkle in if there if you have a movie you want reviewed let me know and i'll put it into consideration because I kind of have a list already set up of the movies I want but hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you know you're ready for this 31 reviews and 31 days there's some days I might have to do a few reviews you know in a row but I'm going to post them on different days so you might see me wearing the same shirt because sometimes I have more time than other days so that's what I'll be doing so hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you'll go ahead and check this out I'll leave the link to where you can purchase it and, yeah, hopefully you stick around for these next 30 days, for these next 30 reviews. Let people know I'm out here. Let me people know I'm doing this. You, you never know. It's one of those nights, Friday nights, you want to watch something scary or horror-related. So definitely go ahead. Let people know. If you haven't already, subscribe. And until tomorrow, I'll see you.